Hello everyone and welcome back to day 13 of Bitwise where we build a complete software hardware stack for a simple computer from scratch. Um, today we're going to, once we start coding, we're going to be doing more, uh, more work on the code generator specifically to, um, to do stuff like uh, add a preamble to the generated C file so we can actually compile them properly and uh, insert um, pound line directives so that when we're doing, uh, if we're doing um, you know, debugging and so on, we will be able to step over the ion code, not the C code, and have things sync up. Um, but before we get to that, I want to spend a little bit of time following up on um, the failed optimization from the end of, of last stream. So uh, just to recap that, you'll recall that we had on our, uh, on our profile, I mean, I can put it back to the way it was, um, we had a 30% a uh, CPU time bucket uh, that was assigned to the system allocator. And uh, like so, rough, well, 30-ish, 30, 30 uh, 26% here. And um, and that seemed like, you know, hey, let's, let's replace that by something else. Um, and my eventual goal was to replace it with a stack style allocator, which uh, since almost all of these cases are um, originating from buff grow, you can see um, out of these samples, the majority come from from buff grow. Uh, let's let's start with a simple append only allocator, which never really frees and reuses stuff. Um, but then hopefully even that would give a significant gain from from what we're seeing here. And then the next step beyond that would be the stack allocator, which um, you know, it's not append only, it both grows and shrinks, but it does so in a stack-like scoped fashion. And uh, the reason I didn't want to do that as step one is that you have to go and mark, uh, mark up the code with sort of pushing and popping uh, the, the mark for the, for the stack allocator to make sure it gets freed. And so I just thought, hey, let's jump, dump in this uh, simple, dumb, append only uh, temp allocator and uh, that should give us at least some of the potential win, and then the stack allocator was get, would, would, would give us the rest. Um, but that turned out not to be the case. So this is what we dropped in. It just uh, allocates a huge, uh, one, one gigabyte, just to be on the safe side, one gigabyte chunk of memory from the OS uh, once it's, uh, on the first request. And then from there, it just, um, it just bumps a pointer um, to accommodate new requests. So this is about as simple as it gets. And, uh, and then we dropped this in. And um, as you can see from from here, it's roughly 1.7 seconds. Um, and uh, and what we found is that actually the theory that this would run better uh, did not seem to pan out or run faster. In fact, the time was basically exactly the same. And uh, yeah, so 1.7. I mean, this is a little bit more than the last one, but that's just, I think, sampling noise. That's not representative of an actual meaningful difference, but they're basically the same. And um, the bucket for the, for the malloc has, of course, disappeared um, since now we're only really doing, you can see there's a malloc here, but uh, it's being called much less frequently. And so the question is, well, what's really happening? And I think on stream, I mentioned a bunch of guesses from my part, which is that um, there was some sort of, of work resulting that the malloc, because the malloc was previously doing these fairly small allocations for the for the stretchy buff uh, growth. And so my guess was, you know, malloc usually has stuff like headers before the payload that it hands out. And so it's going to be touching those memory, certainly pages of memory um, that those allocations live in. And so um, seems likely that basically the reason the time was being assigned to this bucket was whatever work was happening as a result of them of malloc touching that memory is now going to be assigned not to our temp alloc function but actually just to the users of that memory we're handing out um which i mean i guess could be buff buff grow um so actually let's compare that so buff grow now is well I don't know if the self time is indicative, but let's say the um, let's take the inclusive time, so 12%. And I bet if we look at it from before, maybe it's going to be less. So this was with the where is buff grow? Okay, no, that, so that was actually more before, I guess, because the t the, the inclusive time would include the malloc calls. 
um, but it was a 0 0.5 for the exclusive time and now two point whatever. Yeah, so maybe that doesn't quite account for it. But basically my guess was like, hey, the time is just being kind of redistributed to some downstream stuff that's actually touching that memory eventually. But I didn't have a super firm idea. So after the stream, I did some more profiling on my own. And I also talked to some people on Twitter, like Fabian Giesen and, and a few other people who weighed in. And uh, one of the, uh, you know, people suggested various things. And the stuff I had thought about was like, uh, like TLB misses for touching those pages. Um, but also the stuff I hadn't thought about, which, which, which people brought up was like, um, demand clearing of pages. So when you do a big allocation from the OS, it doesn't, um, even if, if it commits the memory to your process, it usually doesn't actually assign physical pages to the virtual pages it's committed until you access them for the first time. And as a security measure, it can't give you pages, for example, that have not been cleared. So suppose another process has written a bunch of uh, data to, to a page and then that process either frees the page back to the OS, or maybe the process exits entirely and all the pages are freed up. Uh, the OS can't directly hand those pages over to a new process because you know the page may contain confidential information like uh, you know a password if it was like a web browser process. And so there would be a massive security hole if you could just allocate memory and essentially snoop other like de snoop dead memory from other processes and, and extract passwords. So uh, basically, all modern OSs. Um, that are security conscious are going to clear pages before they hand them off to you. And some of that clearing is supposed to happen preemptively so that when you actually, uh, you know, you touch a page for the first time, the OS is going to, you know, it's going to page fault because there's no physical memory backing the virtual page at that point, but it should be able to just kind of grab a page from the queue that's been pre-cleared and just sort of hand it back to you. Um, and it, I don't know for sure, but I would, I would guess that it may actually do that more than one page at a time. So, um, you know, it, it, like if you touch one page, maybe it actually takes a bunch of consecutive pages in that memory range and, and assigns them at that point. So it doesn't have to fault back and forth between the kernel and the user space process uh, too frequently. But anyway, so uh, various ideas along those lines and, uh, and some experiments that were targeted at, at um, revealing that. Um, and I did some, some investigation of that on my own. Uh, one of the first things I did was I installed Vtune which I didn't previously have on this machine. And so I, I wanted to um, uh, I wanted to mention that uh, Intel, let's see if I can find, I don't think this is the, let, let me see if I can find the link. Uh, but, but anyway, so Vtune, let me find it from my other browser. Um, dun, 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 dun. Intel System Studio, here we go. So, um, VTune is Intel's profiler. I think it only works on, I mean, it only works on Intel hardware. Uh, it's been around for a really long time. Aside from being useful as a general purpose profiler, the way we we're using the built-in Visual Studio profiler, um, it's also unique in giving you a ton of really detailed information on microarchitecture, like if you want to count the number of, you know, L1 TLB misses or something, uh, and branch mispredictions and how the different execution ports are being utilized on a specific, you know, like a Skylake uh, or a Kevy Lake processor, like a really specific microarchitecture, uh, you pretty much have to use VTune in order to get at all the data. I think, um, uh, at least on Windows, I don't know of any alternative. But uh, the annoyance was always that they had a really obnoxious licensing scheme where, I mean, they had a, some sort of 30 day trial, but then they wanted to sell it to you and it was quite expensive. Um, and I believe you had to renew it. You know, if you wanted to, if you got a new processor that wasn't supported by the old version, you had to pay up again in order to, uh, to get your new license. And uh, it was especially punishing to hobbyists. But finally, after, I guess it must have, must be 15 years or something, they finally uh, changed the licensing terms. So now you can actually get what they call a renewable license. So you, they license you for 90 days at a time, but you can just download it. And I did, and it, it works smoothly. And in fact, it includes not only VTune, but it includes ICC, their C compiler, um, and a bunch of other stuff that I don't really have any use for, but VTune is, is part of this package. So uh, works on, like it says here, Windows, Linux, and Mac. I haven't used the Mac version, but I have used the Windows and Linux versions in the past, so I know those work pretty well. Um, so anyway, and I installed that. And uh, it comes with both a standalone profiler 
that you could just launch as a standalone program. And um, you know, this is uh, this is fine. You can use it like this. This is how I always used to use it. But I also noticed that they actually have support for embedded. Um, if you're using Visual Studio, you can launch it directly from Visual Studio. And one of the nice things about that is you don't have to set up a, a, a VTune project with the right command line and the right working directory. It already it grabs that from the Visual Studio project. And so uh, if you have a Visual Studio project and all the startup settings are set correctly, you can just right click uh, VTune amplifier and let's do a basic hotspots analysis first, which is pretty much what we were already doing uh, in Visual Studio's profiler, but now doing it with VTune just to show you how it looks. And uh, it's, it's probably, it's, it's going to tell us the same sort of information, but maybe in a slightly, slightly different format. So 1.8 um, elapsed, 1.7 for the CPU time. You know, it has a top hotspots. You can see that it says or your CPU utilization is very poor, which for this kind of code is not surprising. Uh, if you go to the bottom up view, which is um, sorting by, you know, by self time, basically, um, you can see, I think this corresponds pretty closely to what we had before. Maybe the order is slightly flipped, but it's, you can see it's pretty neck and neck. Like these two are neck and neck here. And uh, I'm sorting it correctly. Yeah, these two are neck and neck. And the order is flipped, but it's something similar. Um, although the amount of time spent in these two is different, which is interesting. But anyway, it's the same sort of deal. Um, slightly different visualization of, of the same kind of data. Um, and, you know, you can drill down into, th this is the part that's maybe different. You know, if you remember, if you go over here, if I click on next token and I want to figure out who called who, um, they have this kind of call tree here, which I quite like, actually. It's nice for looking at it kind of next to the source view. So you can either drill down or you can drill up. Um, and in VTune, they visualize it like this. So if I expand this tree view control, you can see I, uh, stir intern range uh, is the one that, at least in, in this profiling, uh, is the one that accounts for all these calls. Um, even though we know, I guess actually, since we're only parsing in this one, we're not using it for simple tables. So this would be the only call site of that. Um, but you can see this and you can drill down. So this is the same sort of view, but uh, in a more traditional uh, kind of UI tree view. Um, and you can also, if you double click, it will go to the source code and it will show you um, in this right column, it will show you some of the same stuff we had in, uh, if we double click here, you know, we have this stuff in the left hand side. Um, so it's the same kind of information. There, there's some stuff that annoys me, like um, just from a statistical perspective, you'll see that it says it says here, 9.485 milliseconds. So it has way too many significant digits for what for what a statistical profiler can actually guarantee. I kind of like the fact that Visual Studio's profiler is not adding any significant digits beyond the integer part because I mean this is totally meaningless. The the reason this so by the way when you do a basic hotspot analysis by default it samples 100 times a second. So the sampling interval uh target is 10 milliseconds. The actual number may be different because even though it may be scheduling uh it may be scheduling the samples every 10 milliseconds when the samples are actually taken may deviate up and down by whatever. And uh, this is why these are not just exactly 10 milliseconds, but it's kind of, you know, it's uh, it's, it's saying more than it can really say. So I, I don't really like this, but you can see it's very similar to what we had before. Um, but um, another analysis you can do that's more revealing, and you could do this, I don't think you can do it with Visual Studio's profiler, but you can do, use it with, do it with something called uh, Windows Performance Analyzer, which if you're on Windows, um, is part of the, it's part of some SDK, I think. I don't think you can download it completely standalone. Um, but this lets you use the built-in system profiler in Windows, which I think is what powers Visual Studio's profiler as well. But it lets you get whole system information. So if you want to know uh, what in the OS you're waiting on and stuff like that, uh, typically this is the, the tool you want. And if you want to see if there's any other processes on the system that are somehow interfering with the thing you're trying to profile, this is also the tool you would use. Um, so WPA. And uh, I can't remember where you download it, but yeah, in this uh, 
Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit. They've changed around what, what download it's in, but apparently it's in this one now. That's another one you can use, but uh, VTune can give you some of the same data as well. So let's do another run with VTune, and this time let's do uh, Advanced Hotspots Analysis. And I think this does uh, a thousand samples a second, and it gathers OS calls and stuff like that, not just application calls. Um, and we should be able to see some more stuff in the hotspots list now. You can see it's quite a bit slower because it has to, I guess it's trying to simplify all the various things it found against, this is, yeah, pretty slow. Um, so you can see we have the same stuff as before, but now we have things like ki page fault, which is a kernel function inside the uh, Windows N well Windows <laughs> NTOS kernel. This is just the Windows 10 kernel, but it's been called this for a long time. Uh, if you go and look at the bottom up view, um, you can now see not only that, but a bunch of other things. So uh, you can see suddenly this thing is here. And we can see where it's actually being triggered from. So this is when when these functions are accessing memory, um, and we can see where it, we we can actually see exactly where. Um, but you can see, not surprisingly, this is uh, it's not saying exactly what line it came from, um, but you can see that it, it's it's assigning it to this function, and this function does some stuff with stretchy buffs. So it's almost certainly a result of those stretchy buff allocations. Um, Although I guess that doesn't really account for why this one would, because this one doesn't do that, I think. Um, but anyway, so there's a bunch of page faults related to, this could also be the AST nodes, not just the stretchy buffer data actually. Um, so it's it's hard to see exactly what, what arena they're coming from, just looking at it like this. Uh, but you can also see stuff like, uh, this is some sort of um, linked list atomic thing uh, there's this thing here, access fault. I would guess this is a page fault handler. Um, by the way, um, if you ever, this is not, so React OS or React OS is a independent third party implementation of the well, of various versions of Windows at the kernel level that can actually support even drivers that were written for kind of official Windows. So it has implementations that are at least compatible at the interface level of a lot of these things that are exposed to maybe drivers and other in internal kernel stuff. So um, even though this is not necessarily representative of what the official kernel does, you can at least see what it's supposed to do. Um, so yeah, just a, a tip if you ever want to know what some random Windows function does. Yeah, so this looks like this looks like a page fault handler, some top level thing maybe. Um, and uh, and this thing here, I guess we can see if React OS has an implementation of that. Am I complete? Private zero fault. I'm not going to go too deep into it, but if, if okay. So this may be a function that's not wasn't around uh, for for the versions that they support. But anyway, you can see there's some stuff here. It's not clear how much of this is related to uh, to the specific problem we're trying to diagnose, or whether it's just other stuff. I would expect it's a mix, um, but you know because there's also a lot of AST uh, allocations, and they would presumably have the same issues in terms of of there being a lot of memory and and having to fault that in and maybe do clears and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to show uh, v Vtune quickly as a follow up to that. Uh, now that it's kind of freely available, and the, I mentioned you can do um, what I think they call the microarchitecture analyses, where you can see a lot of the really specific uh, performance counters related to your um, to your computer. So 
uh, let, let me just show you what that looks like. I'm not going to go into it, but just want to show you what, what kind of data you can get out of that. Hmm. All right. Um, right. So you can see, first off, even the overview has a lot, has a lot more information about, uh, yeah, is it front end bound or back end bound? So front end is like instruction fetch and, and things like that, decoding. Uh, bad speculation, you can see there's a lot of bad speculation. Uh, presumably this is mostly branch prediction, although it could also be memory ordering stuff. Um, maybe I won't go into a ton of detail about this. We'll eventually cover more of this when we get to the hardware section of Bitwise. Um, but anyway, if you go and look at the bottom of view, or actually, I guess the event count view. Um, you know, when you're doing a basic, um, a basic, whole, a basic sampling profiler, the way it works uh, is, you know, every every sample, say a thousand times a second, um, it's going to associate the stack, the call stack of the threads at that point with, um, you know, with, you know, say one one one, one thousandth of, of a second of, worth of time. Um, if you're doing an instrumentation profiler, uh, what you're doing is, um, you're measuring, you know, you're sampling a timestamp counter, say on entry and exit to a function and subtracting them in order to get the, the time between the entry and exit. Um, but when uh, the processor, aside from having a timestamp counter, also has a bunch of other internal counters and um, a ton of them actually, um, like this one here, how many are retired? So a retired instruction is one that has fully finished executing. Um, in, in out of order processors, you talk about issue and retire. Issue is when something is kind of sent into the execution pipeline, uh, and that can that can include things that are never actually retired because of um, speculation, right? Like you're you're predicting a certain branch is going to execute, and so you start fetching those instructions down that branch and you issue them, but they don't actually retire and, and fully commit their side effects until you know for a fact that. Uh, that branch was actually taken. So retirement refers to sort of actually finishing and committing instructions. So uh, it can it can measure all of these things. These are all kind of monotone counters that go up over time. And in the same way that you can measure time, you, you and it kind of uh, assign you know time intervals to to different functions using sampling profiling. You can do something similar with these timestamp counters. So um, if I sample you know a thousand times a second and and every time I take a sample, I actually sample all of those event counters, like this, uh, this uh, retirement counter here. Um, and I subtract the, the corresponding counter values between my samples. So, you know, last time I got a million, now I have uh, 1.1 million. That means there's 0.1 million increase since last time. And I'm going to assign that to the functions that were on the stack now. So that's kind of the way they assign these increases to the different um, to the different stack samples. But the kind of data you hear, you can see there's a very big list. I'm not going to go through them, but I just want to give you a sense of how much data you can get here if you really want. Um, like, uh, and again, you have to understand that when they say zero, it just means that they didn't found any, like, because of statistical profiling, it doesn't actually necessarily mean zero. Um, but you can see here, there's some uh, D stands for data, right? Like D cache and I cache, and this is DTLB store misses. Um, and I think if you go to the Intel instruction manuals, you can actually get explanations in detail of these things, I guess. Um, right, so let me show you that. It brought it up in my other web browser, but I'll pull it over. Oh, let me just copy the URL. Uh, but yeah, if you if you right click here, you can see uh, you, you can see what these mean. So if you really want to nerd out about this stuff, I mean, you shouldn't get lost in the noise and think that to optimize code you have to know about all these things. But you know, once you're 
if you ever get to the point where where you're looking at something and you really want to know exactly what's happening this this is kind of invaluable and like i said at least on windows i don't know a way to get this information from any other product and the fact that v2 is now freely available um is is kind of a huge uh, huge improvement in that respect i think if you're on linux um you can actually get uh linux perf, perf profiler tlb misses i think you can actually get this data for um for perf there's a uh, let's see here yeah so i think uh the perf profiler on linux which is the one that everyone seems to use nowadays actually i think has a lot of the pro uh, vendor specific performance counters now and it exposes most of the common things like if you just want to know you know the the tlb statistics it regardless of the processor you're profiling it kind of knows how to map the process the microarchitecture specific performance counter to the generic perf uh, version of that counter so i guess it's actually quite a bit nicer in that respect um, i don't know if they have every last thing like if you want to have all this really specific stuff about um you know which of the execution ports are idle and stuff like that um you know, I, I don't know if they expose that, but at least some of the stuff like TLB misses you can definitely get with that. Anyway, I'm not going to go any any further into this, but I did want to mention that um, uh, that you know this tool is now freely available with a what would they call a renewable 30 day li 90 day license. So I don't know if that lets them eventually yank it back off the shelves uh, in the free version or not. But at least for now, you can download it and use it without any hassle. You don't even have to register on their website, which is nice. Uh, it always annoys me when I have to go and download stuff from actually Intel, but also NVIDIA. Most of them nowadays require you to sign up in some way, which is pretty obnoxious. But uh, at least with the link I provided, you should just be able to, um, well, maybe you have to register, but you, I think you just fill in some, some, some crap and you're good. I think you just fill this in and you don't have to then sign into the website or whatever. Um, and you can, I guess, fill in junk if you want. Actually, you have to fill in your email because they email you the product key. So even though this will let you download it, they have to email you the product key. So I guess you do need a valid email. But anyway, pretty hassle-free as, as far as these things go. Um, all right, was that it? Um, for now, I'm going to leave in this temp allocator. I'm going to move back to the XMalloc. I'm going to leave the code in um, just so I can easily play around with it. But uh, I, I guess it wouldn't be hooked up to anything now. Let me just make sure I didn't break. Um, what is it? Ion name. Let me just make sure I didn't break um, the full compiler before we move on. This seems slower than usual. Let me just rerun that. Should be like seven to eight seconds. Yeah, that's way slower. I don't think I cranked up. Uh, I do not believe I cranked it up, like in terms of the data set size. That's bizarre. What is it doing here? I'll just close all this junk. I don't think I changed anything else. So this is doing the X malloc. That's interesting. This should be the same. I don't know why that's. Uh, 
and its release. I don't understand why the profiler isn't showing me anything now. Sorry, I have to figure out what's going on there. That seemed faster. This is bizarre. I wonder if... This is really weird. I wonder if like Vtune is somehow persistently running in the background and hogging something. Um, which would be odd, but not, I would say, tot totally within my very low expectations for uh, that kind of software. Is this stuff running? Um, this is really not what I was planning on doing, but this is so screwed up that if I screwed something up, I really want to figure out now why I, my, my. My mind is in the right place. Um, uh, why is this running? The amount of garbage that's running on your computer these days is incredible. No, not Cartana. What's that? Standard collector. This looks like. I mean, this sounds like, okay, let me just restart it. I know that, I mean, for all I know, it just is, a, is in a wacky state. I can also hear my, my fan is doing crazy things. Um, CLR, yeah. Why is Watson running? All right. That's like almost double what, what what it was before. It won't let me. Well, let's see if it works now with the profiler. This is so bizarre. This has to be because there's some shit running in the background and it's not um and it's not letting why is it um uh what's the I can't remember half of this windows crap Task list. Um, does grep even work here? VTSS. No, it doesn't. Um, this is not going to be productive. Honestly, I should just reboot the computer, but I'm streaming, so. Like, I, I can even hear my fan spinning pretty wildly, which it really shouldn't. I'm not doing anything. Uh, 
I'm convinced there's some sort of zombie process that has the like the lock on some of the profiling stuff in Windows. Um, what was the, the thing I saw? This one. I mean, collector could mean many things, but this sounds kind of What? Why is this thing running? Why is it uploading? <sighs> yeah. I mean, this has like zero chance of working, but let's see. Yeah, you can see like it's it's getting zero data. Normally there's some sort of graph of, of what's going on there. <sighs> All right. This is really bizarre though. Okay, let's see if chat has any ideas. I'm not looking at file locks. I'm looking at, I mean, I don't know if this is what's going on, but I know that in um, ETW, at least if you're doing real-time tracing, there can only be one session that's doing real-time tracing at any given time. And so on the off chance that it's doing real-time tracing, um, that could be what's going on. But the question is, if it's VTune, that's the culprit, which I've killed, or if it's the previous Visual Studio process. I, I kind of suspect VTune, to be honest, because VTune, I mean, despite the, despite how useful it is, it's it's also really bad software, even worse than Visual Studio. Um, I feel like this collector, I mean, I don't know. To, to me, this just sounds like something. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to be dealing with this shit. But this is such a crazy regression. Like even when I'm running outside of the profiler, it's running at least uh, t takes twice as long as usual. And I don't. I mean, let me look at the, the the Git diff. But I don't think I changed anything other than the temp allocator, which I just commented out. Um, Yeah, I removed the free. That shouldn't do anything. I changed some of the realloc stuff. I mean, that can't really make that big of a difference in performance. That makes no sense to me. Um, but I'm willing to to put it in just to see. Um, right, so it was before um, so this was the old code it uses realloc still very slow. Um, someone's saying, if you click to users and the task manager, you can see, oh, I see what you mean. 
It should just be coming from this. The thing is, so the reason the, the fan could be spinning could be a bunch of stuff. Like it's possible, for example, if VTune is running, there's a possibility that it's intentionally putting the processor into a state where it's not doing power throttling in order to get consistent measurements and stuff like that. Um, in which case, even if the CPU load isn't nominally that high, it could be forcing the you know it could be forcing the the CPU into a higher power state uh, in order to get more precise measurements. Normally, I would actually just reboot, um, to be honest. But with the stream, that's a little bit awkward. But this is so bizarre. Okay, I'm going to to not muck more around with this, even though this is really bothering me. But um, I better reboot and resolve it. Let me just do one last run. There shouldn't be any VTune stuff uh, running. Okay, I'll reboot. Um, it means I have to splice together the videos after the fact. All right, let me let me just reboot. This is too weird. There's too much weird stuff going on. I'll be back in a few minutes.